What's up, mother people? I am in my hometown, G-Town, Gardena, California, where I grew up up until the age of maybe 15 years old. I spent a lot of time here, very nostalgic. Right now, currently homeless, looking for a place to live. I started missing some of the places that I used to go to, and I was like, you know what? Why don't I just do a video showing you guys the landmarks, the spots that I used to go to, and where I kind of grew up. So let's go down memory lane. First stop, we're going to Gardena Bowl, baby. Now you might be wondering, why am I going to a bowling alley in the morning? Well, they have the best cafe here. It's a local joint and everyone comes here to get some good ass Hawaiian local food. The story of my life starts with this institution right here. So I'm not too sure what this has become. I haven't been here in like 20 years. It still has the old sign here. It says Seven Day Adventist Church. It looks like it's still a language school. Yeah, it looks like it's got some Korean writing, Japanese. This is pretty wild. I don't want to go in too deep. It's basically this whole thing is like a school and on the other side, it's a church right there. So why does my life start with that? Well. That school actually sponsored my parents to come to the US. My parents were a part of that same church. They went to the university out there by the church. It was a private Christian institution. And my dad, while he was in Japan, had an opportunity to either go to Germany to pursue his singing or the US. And he's actually been in the US during high school. He visited on an exchange program or something like that. So he was like, you know what? USA all the way. So him, my mom, and my brother, they decided to come over here with my aunt and my uncle and their kids. And my parents were teachers of this language school. They would teach and they got the work visa. They got sponsored to come to the US. And that's how we first laid foot on American soil. Well, not me, I was born here. But looking at this place, wow, I have so many memories. I'm having crazy flashbacks. I remember in kindergarten, I was a part of a different group. We had different teams. Mine was called the Rose Group, called Baragumi. We would compete out in the recess field. Some of us would have red hats, white hats. So imagine all these little kids just running around with different colored hats, competing, basketball, different Japanese games, whatever. For some reason, maybe some of you guys could tell me what it is if you're Japanese and you know this, but when it rained, they would give us beans and we would throw it, we would chuck beans into the parking lot. And that was really funny. We got these, uh, we called it a teru teru bozu, which is like, um, maybe I'll put a picture of it right here, but it's like a little ghost dude. You could tie it up and when it's raining, you could put it up. And I remember spending a lot of my childhood here. So when my family all came to the States, they moved into that tiny little place right there. So those are two regular, you know, homes. And that's a small little, it's probably like 700 square feet. It's a small little house, four adults and four kids. Yeah, eight people all lived in that little space until they got situated and then they moved out. Little house immigrant story. Now we are at the Rhodium Swap Meet. The Rhodium Swap Meet has a special place in many people here in the South Bay. This is the spot in your childhood where you could get bootleg ass toys because your parents didn't want to get you Ninja Turtles. They got you Ninja Salamanders instead. Another fun fact about this place is this is actually the birthplace of NWA where Easy e met Dr. Dre because they had a record shop in one of these booths. Rappers would come in, they would sell a lot of their music and Dr. Dre was one of those guys that would produce songs and sell at one of the booths here. And then Easy e came up and said, I'm looking for someone to make some beats for me. That's how the story went right here at the Rhodium Swap Meet. So imagine everything from Home Depot to CVS to the mall you have here t-shirts you got snacks you got knives you got dogs you even got watch repair jewelry instagram has really influenced the way even mannequins have booties now look look at that booty that mannequin booty wow you got a deal man <laughs> bam here we go <laughs> not only do i get to support local but i also get to keep my teeth fresh and all the Instagrammers always get this one, so they got me sold. Usually these toothpastes are $8 per, but I got two for $5 because he's a great salesman and he sold me on two. 
And that's why the rhodium swap me, it's so cool. Everything is so dang cheap and you could get so many household items and branded products and whatever. And it's good because you're supporting independent as the hipsters say these days. So back in the day, me and my buddies, we started up an eBay business. And during that time, we were like, what if we had a store selling all this stuff? Cause we sold airsoft guns, we sold like toys and die cast cars. And then rhodium swap me, was one of the first places we looked at and we were like, how much is rent to get a little booth here so we could start selling things? And that was like, I think at the time it was like a hundred bucks or two every month and we're like, damn, that's a lot of money. How do you even make as much to pay the rent? You know, that was kind of like our beginning. There's a lot of like, people that get started there. I, I know that some people have a nine to five or they have a regular job or they have a full on business there where they're there every single day. But times have changed. I think like Walmart and Target and all these other shops kind of propped up. Back in the day, there used to be like really niche items there. Like people would really use that spot to sell stuff like from their garage. But nowadays, it's changed just like this neighborhood so as a little kid i would bike up all the way here hit up this del taco get some tacos and after that me and my friends would like to chill right here at this corner on our bicycle so we could smell the king's hawaiian bakery when that bread was nice it would be smelling so sweet in the air and we'd just be going damn that smells so good man but let me just show y'all how japanesey this place is like this whole place looks like a samurai's castle. And you got fucking Toyota right there, man. That is so Japanese. Did it make you feel like you still had a connection to Japan living in like somewhere with all this shit? In the beginning, I didn't even know that there was a difference between countries and stuff like that. So I think I grew up pretty cool yeah. where it was like, you're around all different cultures. It was extremely diverse. There were all kinds of kids, black, white, Asian, whatevers. I had no idea that this was like a Japanese American neighborhood. You thought this was just the world. I thought this was the world, baby. Speaking of elementary school, right behind me is my 186th Street school right there. School's in session and I don't want to seem like a pedal, so I'm not going to be going too damn close to campus. You see that street? I could just poke my head out and be like, that's school and that was my normal life it was kind of weird because i thought everyone was able to just walk to school and everyone around here walked to school side tangent but have you guys noticed that there's no more kids riding around on bikes anymore this is weird maybe i'm just not around a lot of kids that age like fourth grade or whatever but when i was a kid all over this neighborhood like there'll be like five ten of us just on bicycles just riding all over it was like sandlot that i think since the 50s all the way till like i want to say like the 90s it was a normal thing where you would always see kids playing football street hockey soccer all in the street and everyone would be like car and then you have to like move out of the way i don't see that anymore maybe because it's covid but even before covid i don't know do you guys see this too and is this happening worldwide let me know and for junior high school this is where i went whoo right here this is called gardena valley christian school because my parents didn't want me to go to public school anymore because they're like you're learning too many bad things you need to go to jesus school so i went to a christian school Funny enough, it says YouTube right there, right? It says YouTube. And guess who else went to this school? Tim Delaghetto. Very fun fact, I didn't even know that he went to the same school. It's pretty funny because when I went to go meet him up in person, cause we've been like online friends, he was like, is your name Joe Mama? And I'm like, what the fuck? Nobody knows me by that name because that's what everyone knew me as when they went to this school. And then I was tripping out cause I was like, who the fuck are you? How do you know? Come to find out he remembers me and that's because we went to the same school. I don't remember him because I was a part of the junior high. He was a part of the elementary. So the junior high kids never hung out with the elementary kids because we didn't have the same recesses and stuff like that. But apparently the fifth graders and the fourth graders would talk about the middle school kids and that's how they knew who we were. So this is the school I went to, Gardena High. In this exact parking lot where my mom was signing me up, I wasn't here that time because I was a troublemaker. And she says, you need to go to school. And I'm like, I don't want to go to school. Well, as soon as she parked, she said that all these kids jumped out of the fences, 10 cop cars came in, and then she was like, oh shit, this is the kind of school I'm taking my son to. And she goes, well, either way, he needs to go to school and he needs to stop dicking around and staying home. But that is the introduction of what kind of high school this was in my time. 
It's definitely a crazy feeling being here after 20 years. I can't even believe I'm saying 20 years. It feels just like a yesterday. Now I know how all these like old people feel like when they visit something and they're like, oh, so much has changed. Oh, this is so different from my childhood. But Gardena High was top three in the nation for drug trafficking. I like to say I'm very proud. We had a really strong football team because we had a big six foot, 200 pound Samoan kids that were freshmen. It was a pretty fun time. I would like to say I don't know how it is today because obviously I don't see kids like walking around and stuff like that I remember when I was a student here some of the kids basically jumped the janitor they got the key to all the fences the the master lock after second period they would open up all the freaking gates and you would see nothing but high school students just roam around during school hours i think it was really fun for the students but pretty fucked up for all the people trying to keep it together and raise good kids i'm sorry i think i contributed to that craziness but there's so many damn stories that came out of this place and this is also the same time when my dad split so I have really fun memories here, but also sad memories. It's not, it's hard enough being a teen, you know, everyone's suicidal, everyone's emotional, everyone's crazy. There's gang life, there's drug life, there's rave life. There's fun times, crazy times. This is kind of like the moment when you kind of create your individuality and who you are. And for me, there's a lot of impact this school had on me. The school system isn't just a babysitting program, but there's people that give a fuck. And this is where I first learned about activism. This is the first place because a lot of the teachers at this time, they're a product of the civil rights movement. So I learned a lot, you know, about history and things about the contribution that minorities had to America. America, which is now just being taught and, and fought for when I, I didn't realize that the rest of America didn't learn about this stuff. It's just unfortunate though, right? Because there were so many students that cared, but I remember like there was a teacher that got jumped because he told the class that we're all set up to fail. This system sets us up for failure. And then the students were so stupid. They were like, you're calling me a fucking failure. And after school, they kicked his ass. And I was like, that's the most stupidest shit. But he still came back with a cast. He still came back in crutches. He still loved the students. He didn't give a fuck that he got beat up by them and they jumped his ass. Like he still wanted to create a difference and help people. And I was like, damn, dude, that's nuts. I got my ass out of here though. <laughs> after second period, I'm like, peace, bro. I don't want to be a part of this crazy ass system. But I don't know how it is now, you know? I wish I could go in there and kind of see how it is and if things changed because I know like neighborhoods that used to be fucked up all over the world are changing like violence isn't cool anymore gangs aren't cool anymore so like people are getting smarter maybe they have more empathy they're smarter in a lot of different ways they're more informed so hopefully my era was the last I almost had a heart attack y'all I thought the Japanese Empire of markets here in Southern California closed down and that was the beginning of the end but uh, I realized that they just new and improvedly moved to a different place right here in a big shopping center called Del Delamo Mall I used to come to Delamo Mall as one of the biggest motherfuckers in the whole entire universe malls because malls used to be a very fashionable thing to do where you went up and picked up girls this was before your time let me show you america through the lens of a japanese man look at all these drinks this place has a very special place in my heart and it is the torrance beach can you look at that I have a lot of great memories because during the summer my parents would drop me off and my friends at this beach this exact beach and I remember this lifeguard tower because what was popping back in the day was Baywatch it was a masterpiece if you guys grew up on Baywatch you know exactly what I'm talking about if you're like a fourth grader it's one of your first times you experience the love and the crush for for the other gender you know what I mean during the summertime when they had like junior lifeguard operations all the kids would run I begged my parents to put me in that stuff so I can also be a lifeguard but I think it was like pretty expensive or they didn't even know how to reach out and do it so what they would do is when they dropped me off me and my friends would just see their workouts and we would be like the kids that are following and copying what they did so when they went and swam we went and swam when they did the whole thing here and they ran that's what we did looking back it was pretty hilarious that they let us do that but it's got some good memories here this beach is where I also had my first crush you know that pretty funny okay so do you remember that song kiss by a rose by like a uh, seal he was British 
Yeah. Right? Back in the day, I had a boom box and I had that song as a single yeah. in my boom box, right? And I remember there was this girl, she was like right there on a skateboard. She was riding and I was like, oh shit, she's so hot. And she was a part of the junior lifeguard team over there. So every time I saw her, I just had this huge crush on her. And so I put that song in the boom box. I put it over my shoulder like this and I would walk by her really cool, hoping she would notice me, but I didn't have the balls to say hi. Until one day, I think it was like the end of summer, I finally said hi and she said hi and that was it. You know what's weird? My parents let me stay here as a fifth grader, fourth grader or whatever by myself. Isn't that crazy? That's weird. Would your parents ever let you do that? No, not on the beach. They yeah, dress. I know, right? Maybe because Japan was so safe, they were just like, ah, oh, they're going to the park. But then I could have drowned. But then again, there were lifeguards. We actually saved a couple of kids from drowning too, because we would be playing here. And I remember going up, hopping over the waves. There would be people just chilling here with kids playing. And one time the kid went in too deep, got swallowed in and my friend grabbed them from the back and I put them on my bodyboard yeah. and then we brought them back. And I felt like I was really a part of Baywatch. First and foremost, let me bring out the snacks or ah. <laughs> Do you know what a takoyaki is? No. It is an octopus ball. I think taco is octopus and yaki is like grilled. So it's grilled octopus. Look, it's got an octopus on the side. Oh, the little. Let's go. You gotta do it two balls at a time. Huh. Next up, to wash it down, we have pizza oolong tea. Mmm. We had to get the London coffee. Good. Dang, that's good. Oh, this, this is what I chose. Hata Kosen, happiness just for you. It's melon soda. Oh, that sound. You're looking very young at this angle. Can you believe that I'm 42 years old? Are you? Minus five. Oh. <laughs> mm. Is this the life you thought you would have when you were 16? When I was coming here wishing that I was a junior lifeguard, I don't think I would have ever believed that I would be doing YouTube videos, entertainment, any of that stuff. It's just kind of crazy how it all came together because during that time, I had a crush on a skater girl and I wanted to be a lifeguard and a graffiti artist at the same time because I was from Gardena, baby, G-Town. I wasn't really thinking too much about the future. All I knew was in elementary school, I wanted to be a pirate. Nice. That was my goal in life. I wanted to be a pirate and because I loved booty, I loved treasure. I loved gold. I loved Pirates of the Caribbean. I loved all that shit. And then later on, I wanted to be an artist and I wanted to create a clothing brand with graffiti on it. I thought I was so next level because <laughs> at the time, no one was doing it. Really? This was like sixth grade. Yeah. The only, the first group that started to do it was Jinko Jeans. Mm. They were putting like graffiti patches on pants. The next was Stussy. Stussy oh. came back. Yeah. I feel like a lot of kids go through like a suicidal phase in high school. At least it was common for me and my friends, hardcore kids that are into drugs and all that shit, right? But if I could tell my younger self, dude, life goes on. It sounds like a cliche and it might even seem like I just got lucky. There is luck, but everyone says luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So you have to be prepared for that luck. And I don't want to get too preachy, but I I'm saying that all the things that brought me to who I am today, exploring into music, exploring into graffiti, the arts, getting involved with a, a bunch of hoodlums, party goers, <laughs> all that. It's cultivated this really interesting character. And I think I'm pretty interesting because the more stories I hear of other people, I realize I didn't grow up so stereotypical, but I think there's a lot of things human that we all connect on, which is like teenage angst, teenage depression, even adult depression, all that stuff. We all go through it, but we feel so isolated. And I want to tell my younger self if I could, or maybe you guys that are watching that life does go on and you have the power to change your situations. It might not happen overnight but you can chip away at it little by little and all these little things that I thought were permanent like back in the day when I was in high school so I didn't even know what the hell a GPA was and I thought only geniuses went to college when I was given that opportunity to go to college and I, I've been told I was stupid all my life I wasn't intelligent enough and all that stuff so I wanted to use that opportunity to prove to the world like hey man I can get a GPA 4.0 all A's I could do that too you know and I graduated. But back then I would have never thought that I'd go to college. I would have never thought that I'd do YouTube, run a business, kind of change the status quo or change what the norm is on how you build a company, change people's perspectives of what a lifestyle should look like or what is normal.
normal and what is acceptable. All these things I didn't like as a child. And I'm pretty sure that now people feel the same way. They, there's like things about society where they're like, it could be better. Things could be different. You don't just have to accept it the way that it is. It gets better by you taking the personal responsibility one foot in front of the other, taking those baby steps to basically work at whatever you're struggling at. Like whether it's relationships, something you see wrong with the world, everything that bothers you, it is something within your control that you can change. I'm talking about my friends and family and people who's like, I've seen just climbed out of the dumps and like in worse situations than me, who's just really has the strength to build and keep going. I'm super inspired by that. So hopefully like, you know, you know what I'm saying is not just some inspirational bullshit, but if you guys been watching me for over a decade, you guys see me grow from, you know, working a job at a warehouse to building my own company and all this stuff. And so if I could tell my younger self this, it's keep fucking going. Cause you, you can do whatever um, you want to change for yourself. Last but not least, you know what this represents? This brown one is me, because when I go to Hawaii, I get a little chocolate, right? Tan. And the pink one is Hannah. Even if she's in Hawaii, she's still pink like cotton candy. And together we make a great team. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for joining me today. This was one of those videos where I just wanted to fuck around and see what will happen. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more beautiful places that spark a memory, where I can go off and tell you my histories. And with that, I leave you with a bye-bye. Bye-bye. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Chuck E. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Chuck E. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Birthday. Chuck E. Cheese. Birthday. Chuck E. Chuck E. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Chuck E. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Birthday. Chuck E. Cheese.